while I'm recording this, my wife is actually watching Psych right now. So if you hear any weird, strange sound effects in the background, other than animals running around upstairs, that's what it is. I could really use a soundproofed room. <laughs> Convenes and welcome to episode 106 of Discovering Doctor Who. Yes, we are getting closer and closer to finishing up the ninth series and then getting to the review of the Christmas special, which, yes, I did the reaction for a little while back, or at least a few weeks back, but let's get right into this very interesting episode, starting with some of my favorite parts. The first of which is how they utilize the doctor's nightmare or they get into his dreams they get into his nightmares and they utilize that to portray the creature chasing him throughout this the creature that is the slowly lurking death or it's basically the visage of death in this episode and even though again to the best of my knowledge unless something was brought up in a classic episode although this entity hasn't really been mentioned before I do enjoy how the way Capaldi acted and the way Capaldi reacted to seeing it you can tell or he made it seem as if that had been a long-lasting fear a fear that possibly could have been you know just part of his memories all along part of the doctor's actual memories so I just I really love the way that they pulled that off now moving on to my second favorite part of this episode. I apologize, I'm doing it on my phone again this time. Um, but my second favorite part is the Doctor's mind slash the TARDIS, or like the TARDIS inside of his mind, where he went to slow down time, to talk his way through the situation, to find a way out. And having these very strange, like, not, a, not really conversations, obviously, but this back and forth with the Clara in his mind, and just the way that was done was phenomenal. Like the first time the Doctor popped into the TARDIS, or the TARDIS control room, I thought that this was like actually taking place after the events we were currently seeing, uh, where he was trapped inside the area. Well, there's no reason to, to hide it. When he was in the confession dial. If you haven't seen the episode yet, I'm sorry, but like I mentioned before, it, spoilers, it's in the text at the beginning of the video. But anyway, yeah, just the entire way that all those scenes were utilized were just amazing and so well done and it's just part of what ties into something else that I'm going to get to here shortly. Alright, moving on from there, my third favorite part of this episode, the skeletons, or really more accurately the skulls. Just the way that, uh, I mean especially the first time we see them, it's like we do see a skull or like a skeleton skull yeah, a skull, you know, early on, but then we see, after he goes into the water, all of those skulls, and it's just mind-boggling. It's, it's so hard to try and fathom where all of those skulls came from, and it just, well, I mean, you know, moving on from there, finding out that all of those skulls were the Doctor, which I kind of, uh, admittedly, I kind of suspected that from early on because of the way things were working out. But when it's actually revealed that, it's just, it's still just like such a, such a punch to the gut or a punch into the chest. Uh, um, I just really love the way they did that. So moving on from there, my fourth favorite part of this episode was that we find out that this is, even though we find out it's the confession dial, and he refers to it as like his own personal torture chamber. One of the words that he uses, I think, speaks the most to what this place was. This was his own personal hell. Quite literally. He lived, he remembered what was going on, and then he would die over and over and over for billions of years throughout the course of the episode. Just the idea of that, I mean... 
uh, now admittedly I'm not a scholar or anything on religion, but I do know that in the Christian religion, you know, when it's referred to hell, it's the place of eternal damnation, the place of constant death and gnashing of teeth and so on and so forth. And I assume that, you know, other religions have something similar to that. But yeah, just the idea that this is his own personal hell and just like, and he's in there for, it's to any nor to, to any person's ideal is like essentially an eternity of time. It's a number that we can calculate, but it's a number that we can't truly fathom living or having to exist that long. And just the way it's utilized and making it the doctor's personal hell is just phenomenal and so well done. That is really loud. <laughs> All right, moving on. My fifth favorite part of this episode was the bird story. Now, I believe I've heard a version of the story before. I don't know that I've heard the exact uh, Grimm Brothers version. Uh, definitely not the one that uh, the, the doctor tells over and over until he finally reaches the end of it. But just the way, not only the story, but the way it's utilized. Because as time goes on, not only do we get an idea of how much time has passed because of you know, the doctor referring to the stars and saying that it's like, you know, it's thousands of years, hundreds of thousands, millions, and then billions of years have passed. But the far each, as we go through that cycle, he gets farther and farther along in the story until he finally reaches that last line. I would say that, oh, I actually don't remember the actual line, but uh, I would say that's one hell of a bird. <laughs> and I just, Again, just the way that's utilized, the way they use that story as it goes along with what he's doing in each and every form, knocking through that, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I'll put the name of what it is, but basically the hard substance that's 400 times harder than diamond. But yeah, I just, I, I love the way that was done throughout, this, well, I mean, obviously the end, the end of the episode. But moving on from there, my sixth favorite part of this episode was Clara, and the fact that we get to see Clara again in here, which was completely unexpected. I mean, obviously, we had Clara facing away. It was like a ghost Clara, essentially. And just sort of a, just a ghostly figure. It didn't even have any real connotation or any real feeling of the character of Clara until that last moment where, again, you know, I mean, it's in his mind only, but Clara comes up and talks to him, and that was just such a, a, a beautiful moment, really. I, I really did love that. Now, I, I like the way they utilized the character, the teacher, shall we say, like, you know, just walk, writing on the chalkboard and just standing there. That was interesting and rather creepy, but more than anything, I just, I, I loved the scene where they brought her there, and it was just so sad, especially just seeing the doctor's reaction. It's just, it's so good. All right, moving on from there, my seventh favorite part of the episode, and I, kind of, I basically hit on this in reference to the bird story, but that's the repeating. The repeating of everything over and over and over again. Now, not so much, I think the reason why I like that so much is that it's just, it's an insane concept to really try and visualize that the doctor or anyone including the doctor would do the same this essentially the same thing there might be slight variances slight variances but do the same thing over and over and over again repeatedly recreating himself each time dying painfully each time crawling to that machine to recreate himself and then going back to that spot eventually and continuing to punch on the substance the stuff that's harder than diamond I just, it's, again, just the, the mere concept of that is just amazing to me. But now, my eighth favorite part of the episode was the reveal, and especially if you saw my reaction video for this episode, the reveal of where he is. He's on Gallifrey. After all this time, he's back on Gallifrey and just the reveal as a kid is running away and we see the city it's just it was I mean, I mean thinking about it now even as I'm getting chills because I'm visualizing that scene and it's just so well done now I know some people were able to guess where he was just based on the lighting and all that but for me it was a legitimate surprise 
and it just it filled me with glee waiting for what was going to happen in the next episode so yeah I oh and I actually do have one other favorite part but I'm going to hold off to mention what that is until a little bit later but from there let's move on to some of my annoyances with this episode and there, there are a small handful as always you can refer tell me whether or not you think they're nitpicks but I wouldn't list them if they weren't at least the slightest bit annoying for me starting with the skulls in the water. Now, earlier I did mention that the skulls and the skeletons essentially were what was one of my favorite parts of the episode. And it's true, but one thing that bothered me was that after 7,000 years, or you know, approximately, approximately 7,000 years, as the doctor mentions in the first full cut of the episode, basically, or full cut of what happens, there are so many skulls in that water. Just so many. And I, I and it seems like it's an, uh, I mean, it doesn't really go out to the ocean or anything. It's an, you know, an encased body of water. So over thousands, millions, billions of years of the doctor repeatedly dying over and over and over again and more skulls falling into the water, how did it not eventually fill up? Because, you know, there's the rule of, you know, things get uh, uh, reset, which is another point I'm going to touch on in just a second. But obviously that doesn't happen with the skulls, otherwise they would have been gone a while ago, and all of those skulls wouldn't be there. So over billions of years, that pile would have grown exponentially to where it kind of would have been filling up the entire area. Now, I, I, that one is probably the closest to being a nitpick in my opinion, but it's still strange, I guess you would say, and yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. But okay, my second annoyance with this episode is it has to do with when the Doctor is punching that wall, or punching the thing that is 400 times stronger than Diamond. And, he, oh, the, the first time he punches it, and just the growls of pain that he lets forth. You can tell his hands, well, I can't remember if he just punches with one or if he does it with both, but I mean, his hand is shattered. He has broken it into a million pieces, but he just keeps going as hard as he can, as long as he can. But then we reach the, fi the very last portion, the last time he's punching it, and seemingly his hand isn't broken. Now even if there was a, like a thin layer of this stuff left, as hard as a diamond is when it's as small as it is and it's 400 times stronger than diamond, I find it hard to believe that even if he that last punch did manage to, and that was the only punch he did, in that regeneration, reincarnation, whatever you want to call it of him, that, that wouldn't have broken his hand. Now, it's a logic leap, obviously, but it is just one thing that, especially after watching the episode a second time, is rather strange. Not necessarily bad, but strange, and to the point where it does annoy me because now I can't stop thinking about it. But okay, moving on from there, my third and final annoyance with this episode is that several times throughout the episode, the Doctor refers to everything... Or, well, at least a few times in the episode, the Doctor refers to the rooms reset, or things reset in the castle or in the building that he's in. And that stays consistent, for sure, within the walls. But then, obviously, there's the exception of all those skulls in the water. And then, apparently, the harder-than-diamond stuff that he's been punching all that time and the reason why that annoys me is that, okay, I, I'll give you that if the skulls don't disappear or get reset because they're not within the walls of the building, the room that he's in, where there is that barrier, that's technically within the walls, is it not? That is a room within the building, so each time that happens, shouldn't the barrier have regenerated? Or, uh, reset, should I say? 
Now, I know that had that happened, there would have been no real conceivable way for the doctor to get out, except for, you know, admitting all of his, uh, uh, uh confessing everything. Which actually reminds me of something that I'll come back to here in just a second. But, yeah, just the fact that, I don't know, there's some inconsistency in how everything supposedly resets just doesn't feel right, or it, it just feels the slightest bit inconsistent. Although, especially for the barrier, it's inconsistent for the purpose of the story being able to continue. Now, what I wanted to touch on, uh, that actually made me think of one other favorite part of this episode, and that is the confessions that the doctor gave. Um, that he didn't leave Gallifrey because he was bored, but because he was scared. And some of the, just some of the other things that he reveals, and I found those to be really interesting, and I, I honestly really wanted to see more. I wanted to see some other confessions. It's like, yeah, he can't talk about the, uh, you know, the hybrid or whatever. But the Doctor has a lot of secrets. It would have been really cool if they had written in a few other things or even a few extra secrets during the montage near the end where the Doctor is slowly but surely getting through the barrier over the period of billions of years. So yeah, I, I, I really wish that we could have gotten more of that, but I liked the confessions. I liked how they worked those in and some of the things they revealed about the character. So yeah, there you go. Um, as for my final favorite part of the episode, I'm still not going to reveal that quite yet. But as always, if you have any of your own annoyances, any of your own favorite parts of the episode, please do list them in the comments down below. And obviously, like I said, I'm holding out on my last one, on my last favorite, but you know, it might match up with, with one of yours. I don't know. We'll see. But okay, moving on from there, I do have a question regarding the confession dial for the doctor. Now, this, I mean, the Doctor's Confession Dial is the only one we've ever seen, at least in the new era. Um, maybe it's something that was brought up in the classic era, but again, as far as this new era goes, that's the only time we've ever seen it. And considering what happens inside of that Confession Dial, all the things the Doctor goes through over the course of billions of years, is that something unique to his dial, to his confession dial, or is that something that could potentially be done with any Time Lord? And that's a question that will most likely never be answered. I don't expect it to ever be answered, but it's one, it's, it's a question that I can't help but ask. With all the things that went on inside of that confession dial, that will is supposed to reveal all of his secrets upon the time of his death. Could that be some? Could what happened be really unique to his dial, or is that something again? Because I'm restating myself. Is that something that could happen to any Time Lord, possibly if they are trapped within the dial like the Doctor was, which is kind of weird, but whatever. So yeah, that's my question for this episode. Now. That brings me to, to the quote of the episode, and also my absolute favorite part of this episode. My quote of the episode is every line from Capaldi in this episode. I realize that is a horrible cop-out. I will not lie and say it is not a cop-out. But in an episode where the other than the short moment with Clara, where 99% of the talking in this episode is done by Capaldi, acting by himself, occasionally with a non-speaking entity near him, his acting, visual and audible, was out of this world. Every line he gave felt felt real and legitimate. If Capaldi one day put on a one-man show on stage and all he did was recite the lines from this episode, I would go see that and I would pay a lot of money to see that. Because his acting alone, his 
delivery of the lines alone sold this episode and revealed to my overall thoughts of the episode made it one of my personal favorites that I have seen so far. It was an excellently executed episode. If you think it was boring, that's understandable. There was not a lot going on in this episode. It was a very compact episode. There, w there wasn't a lot to happen, and it had to all be carried on the shoulders of essentially one person. Again, with some very slight exceptions there. And in my opinion, it was directed very well, it was overall written rather well, and the acting was just superb on all counts. The, the villain, I mean, uh, obviously the villain chasing the Doctor didn't have to do or say much, but that was acted well. It seemed truly intimidating, even without the weird flies and stuff. Um, Jenna Coleman, as Clara, did a great job in her short appearance. But most of all, Peter Capaldi just sold the entire episode. It's an episode that I can see myself going back and revisiting time and time again. It's an episode I can see people possibly making theories out of. It's like, you know, and it, even possibly, I mean, who knows, if I get a wild hair, I might try and start coming up with a theory of my own regarding that question I have, you know. Is this something unique to the Doctor's dial, or is it something possible for all Time Lords? I, it's just, it's, it's an episode that will not be leaving my memory for a very, very long time. It is not an episode I will forget, which is a much better way to phrase that. <laughs> but alright, um, that's all I have to say for this episode. Other than, and again, although I don't have a track of the episode for right now, the music in this one also amazing very well done very subtle when it needed to be very intense when appropriate and it was just such a everything about this episode was amazing again with except for my slight annoyances that really in the big picture don't matter is just an outstanding amazing episode if you disagree with me that's absolutely fine you have your own reasons for that but for me and i know a few others this is just one of the best Doctor Who episodes, I think, that has ever come about, in my experience. But alright everyone, uh, as always, please do leave your thoughts down below. Um, I'm really looking forward to what you might have to say, and if you have any particular quotes that might be your favorite, because again, I know I did a cop-out that's cheating to say the entire episode, but it's true. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, again, everyone, thank you very much for joining me for the 106th episode of Discovering Doctor Who. I'm very much looking forward to the final review for Series 9, and then moving on to the Christmas special. And that being said, I will see you all next time for the review of Hellbent. And until then, everyone, Alonzi!